a.m. Uh, had to be canceled, so we will not have the office hours portion at 1045 either. So the 10 a.m. piece on Weavis reporting is canceled, and the office hours at 1045 will not be happening. But what will be happening today is our adult ed data reporting and LACES uh, discussion that's going to be uh, overviewed by Nick Northup and Dr. Tim Anderson. So before they get started, just make sure to you a uh, reminder for the housekeeping items. Uh, please remember to keep your mic muted, type any questions that you have in the chat, and we will uh, uh, evaluate whether we need to go ahead and now or hold those till the end of the discussion or presentation by our Nick and Dr. Tim Anderson and ask us at the end if need be. You also have a brief evaluation survey at the end to complete. Uh, but prior to we get uh, turned over to Nick and Tim, uh, Mindy Marshall wants to jump in with a few items that she wants to discuss. So Mindy, uh, go ahead and take it from here. Great, thank you, Nick. I just wanted to extend my sincere thanks and appreciation to the administrators during this um, transition time during uh, transitioning from a, an old system to a new system. And of course, timing is everything. This time last year, we were making the very a very hard decision on whether we should uh, exit our current system and move on to a new system. So after we made that decision, of course, uh, we had everything in place to start training, and uh, transitioning to a new system when COVID hit. So after the shutdown, the shutdown happened mid-March, we already had training scheduled. We had a trainer coming from Colorado, or no, I think she's from somewhere, somewhere out in that area, in that state. She was coming in to do face-to-face -face training. At that point, we had to convert everything to virtual training during all the mayhem of trying to figure out how to do remote instruction, virtual instruction. So um, I know that it was a very trying time for everyone, and I really, I really appreciate the assistance that the administrators provided to our instructors by letting them in the buildings. They had to print reports. They had to re-enter data into the new system from the old system. So not only were they trying to navigate a new way of uh, instruction, they were also in the process of converting to, to this new data system. So I just wanted to say thank you for everything that you did, for the assistance that you provided to the teachers. And uh, we wanted to give you the opportunity to see this new system and know that you have access to any of the reports so that you can log on at any time and see how things are going in your program. Thank you, Nathan and Nick. I'll let you go ahead and get started. All right, great. Thank you. And, and again, I just wanted to just let, uh, say thank you as well. Um, we appreciate the assistance that you did provide to the instructors during this, this time. Um, so we truly appreciate that. So give me one second and allow me to share my screen. Okay. Can everyone see my screen? Yes, sir. Okay, great. So the very first thing, this is the LASIS um, login screen. If you do not have an account or if you forgot your password or forgot, forgot your account name, please send me an email. Um, if you click here, forgot account, this will go to LASIS and LASIS will send an email for you to reach out to me. So if you cannot remember your account name or your your account password, just send me an email and I'll be happy to um, send you the link. And um, so if you do have any questions, just please, like I said, just reach out to me and I'll be glad to do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and sign in. And the very first thing you want to do when you sign in, you want to select your agency. So this is a new term that, that we used to, that we never had. Um, so when you do this, if you click the down pointing arrow, you can select your agency. Um, say, for instance, I'm going to use the West Virginia LASIS training, but if you were in a certain county, for example, Wood County, you would select Wood County Schools. So I want to select West Virginia LASIS training. And why this populates, this is the dashboard, and I'll cover the dashboard. It's one of the last things I, I will cover. 
But this is the dashboard to just provide some different information. Um, you can customize this yourself. So the next tab is the student tab. And the student tab lists all the students that have been created within your agency. So within this fiscal year, you can remove the fiscal year and you can see if there's more students. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the fiscal year back. I'm just gonna kind of walk you through this first and then I'm gonna show you the reports. Um, so the next thing is the class tab. And the class tab lists all the classes within the agency. So I'm under the training site. So we have numerous classes where our instructors have gone in and participated. But if you go to class, if you have multiple classes within your agency, I could go to class, find my class, select it, and then see, go to enrollment. I can then see the students that have been enrolled within this agency as well. So in here is where instructors should log attendance for their students, log their instructional hours. The next tab I want to talk about is staff. This is the staff tab, and this lists every teacher that is associated with this agency. And you can assign, once you have a class created, you can assign an instructor for that class. So I'm going to the West Virginia Adult Ed awesome, is Awesome class, and I click Instructor. And then you can see that I'm an instructor and Pam Young is an instructor in this class. So, so those are a few tabs that I just want you to be aware of. So I'm going to go back to the Student tab. And one of the things that Mindy, when Mindy and I discussed to showing you guys LACES, we wanted you to be aware of some of our reports. So to get to the reports, you want to be under the student tab. And the NRS, which is the National Reporting System, is where we send our, these are federal reports that we send to them every year. And it tells us vital information. So if you click on searches, you'll find a different set of searches here. If you click on the arrow beside NRS, it then provides an entire list of NRS searches, or I'm sorry, NRS tables that we have to report. Today, I wanna to talk to you about table four. Table four is our, I call it our bread and butter report because this is where we get our funding and it shows what we are doing within our class. So I'm gonna walk you through that one more time just so you can kind of see how to get there. So I'm under the student tab and I'm under the current fiscal year. If I go to searches, NRS, and I want to run NRS table four. So if I have only one, if I wanna run the report only on this agency, I'm going to go to table four and I'm going to replace. And then I'm going to select the value and I'm going to select 2021, that's our fiscal year. So now you can see the data for table four. This information is drillable. So if I want to see how well, what student is in here in uh, ABE level one, I could click on this and it would show me who the student is. To get back, I can just click on the pencil and it will take me back to table four. So table four, what it does, it shows us how many students have made an EFL gain, how many students have entered or attained a secondary school diploma or uh, entrance into post-secondary. So this report is very important. And this is based off of our measures that we have negotiated each year. And if you look in this column, this is the column you want to look at to see if we are meeting those measures. So does anybody have any questions regarding table four? And I'll show you something else in a few minutes regarding table four. Okay. No questions, Nick. All right, great, thank you. So the next thing I want to show you is table 4B. So let me reset. 
So I, here again, I'm under my agency and I'm under the current fiscal year. And I'm going to searches. Now, ESL gains is the easiest way for our instructors to, to show that we are making progress. So table 4B is, your, is one that we see, you know, are we assessing? You know, right now I understand COVID has had an impact, but we do have remote assessment and we can see which students have been assessed. And, and like I said, this is the easiest way that we can show the federal government that we are doing what we're supposed to do. Also, in, um, it also builds the student confidence when they go up a level. So here again, I'm going to go to, I'm under the student tab and I went to searches and I'm under NRS and I'm going to NRS table 4B and I'm going to select replace. So once this populates, I'm going to select the current fiscal year. And here again, this is table 4B. So it would show the number of students enrolled in each EFL level. It would give you a total. It would show their hours. It would show their gains, which student had a gain. And then it also shows what students left before a gain, if you have anybody else in that level, and their percentage. So I will tell you, we like to have approximately 60% of our students to be assess, uh, assessed. And, and that's just a rule of thumb that, that we kind of, it's an unspoken rule, I guess. But 60% is kind of where we want our classes to be assessing students at. And here again, I understand COVID has played an impact. So does anybody have any questions about table 4B? No questions so far. All right, great. If you have any questions, just let me know. So the next thing I want to show you are the reports, additional reports. LASIS does some amazing reports. And to get there, I'm under the agency. I have the current fiscal year selected. And then if I click on the reports tab, I have all of these reports that I can run that I can look at. Um, regarding my class or my agency. So, and it will depend on the number of students that you select. So if you, you have just your students, this system will run only on the students that have been selected. So one of the, my favorite reports is the student goals. Um, goals met in range. I'm sorry, Goal, goals met in period, I've written down. And if I put in the dates, so let's say I want to look at this year for the, the first part of the fiscal year, I'm going to enter the date range and then I'm going to click print PDF and the report will pop download. And you could also use Excel, I always just use PDF. And this report is, this is based off of, it's kind of similar to our student achievement report. However, it just gives an aggregate total um, for each goal type, um, whether it's an industry recognized, whether it's a further, further education or training, employment, um, or educational. So it, it gives an aggregate, and this is pretty telling, you know, a doll that everyone assumes that we are only high school equivalency, but we do offer other things. And this shows if a class is offering additional certifications um, within their program. So this is one report that, that I do like. Another report, so let me close this. And here again, I'm still under the, the reports tab and I'll go back to it show you how I got there. I go to reports. And then is the student hours no page break? And I can select the dates 
or a date range that I want to see. So I'm just going to run it on the same date as before, print PDF. It will generate, and you will open. This gives a breaks it down by student, um, by, their, by the name, how many hours. But if you scroll all the way down, you can see how well, how many hours this, that class has, contact hours this class has earned within that time period. So as you can see, this uh, agency or this class, they had 185 hours for all students added up. The, another report that I like is the hours between assessment. So if you want to put less than 50 or less than or equal to a number, you can do that as well. And you can print the PDF. And this would generate a report students that have less than 50 hours. So as a rule of thumb, we should be assessing students prior to the, or prior to the 50th hour. So, um, so this is just a way for teachers to keep track. And the last report that I would like to show you is the goals met and date range. Some of the reports are named very similar, and I always have to catch myself, make sure I'm clicking the right one. So here again, I just entered my parameters. Now, this is neat because it breaks it down by student, and you can see what goals that student has earned within that time range. So in, if you have a very large class, this could be several pages long. Um, so, but it, it is pretty neat because it does break it down to show you the student, what goals they have achieved. So it, it's just a, a quick glance. The other thing that I would like to show you is the graphic reports. So I'm under my agency and I'm, if you click on graphic reports, some people do not like to see information in a chart, but a nice graph. Here's a pie graph or pie chart of demographics based on gender. So if you were wanting to market information um, or market to a class to a certain population, you can see that the majority of students in this class are male. You also could look at demographics by age. Here again, you can see that the majority of students are between the ages 25 and 44. So those are two reports that you would you could use to help with marketing purposes, um, because you know we should always be out marketing our programs and recruiting students. Does anybody have any questions about the reports or graphic reports? Nick, no questions thus far. All right. Well, the last thing I would like to show you is the dashboard. So, and the dashboard does tie into some of our federal reporting, um, but it provides information um, that could be useful just to your class. So, when you go to the dashboard, you can customize this. You can add as many reports or many as widgets as you as you want. And to do that, you would click on the widget library and then click one time on the widgets you would like to see. So some of my favorite widgets are the actual versus target because I can look to see I've had 29 students enrolled to date, but only eight of those students are NRS qualified. So then I'm going to start looking, why do I have 21 students that are not NRS qualified? And if I want to drill down, I can click on this 21 and then see a list. And then I can start looking, okay, well, I can see some have not had an assessment. So this is very, very valuable information um, that you could use to see, because we wanna to try to get as many students as we can 
to become NRS qualified because we report that number. The next thing, next one that I like is the level of completion by EFL. So this is only based on assessment. And what you can see here, this black line going across the top of the chart, these are our negotiated measures. So every year, this is what we negotiated. And LACE has put that in for us. You can see a blue line, blue bar graph here. This is based on the students that have been assessed. The green is for, um, is for state. So this is the state average, this is the class average. So if I want to see who these 33 students are, here again, I can click on it, and this, it'll show me the 33%. The next one that I'd like to show is the measurable skill gain completion by EFL. This widget encompasses every, every, um, every MSG gain, sorry. So here again, here is our negotiated measures going across the top of the page. This is the class. The green is the state average. So you can see how well the class is doing based on the state. So it's comparing the state to the class. And then the last one that I'd like to show you is the student alerts. So this is the student alert, and this is customi customizable. And to order to do that, if you click on the gear, you can then set the parameters that you would like to see. So I have a set mine. I want to know who has not been assessed within five days, students not assessed within 12 hours, and students enrolled with no instructional hours in five days. So then you would just click save. And this does take a minute to load. So as you can see, I can see that there's been 58 students within this training agency that have not been assessed within five days. So then that would, to me, that, that's what I'm going to start questioning. Why do I have so many students not assessed? Or, but this is the one that I particularly like because our policy in the adult ed is that we have to assess students before the 12th instructional hour. So if I see a number this large, I'm going to start questioning why have students not been assessed? So I can click on this number. And here again, this is all drillable. I can see the list of students that have not been assessed. And then I can try to start figuring out what exactly is going on with that class. Sorry about that. And then the next one that I want to discuss is the students eligible for, for post testing. Now, if you have a student who has been assessed in reading and math, and they gone up in reading, but they did not go in, up in math, they're going to populate this student alert, students eligible for post-testing, because they are still eligible for a post-test. Now, on our desktop monitoring tool that we have developed, we also have students eligible for post-tests with no MSG in current POP. So if they have not made any gain whatsoever, they would populate here. And we want to track those students, the ones that have not made a game, because we need to be working with them to, to get a game. But this is drillable. Every single one of these numbers are drillable. So I can click here, and it would show me, if there was any student, it would show me their names. So there are numerous widgets. Please go in and set it up how, how you feel. Um, but, you know, like I said, just get in and kind of play around with the system um, because it, it, there's so much information here, it, it's almost overwhelming. And we never had had that much before under our old system. So does anybody have any questions about the student widget or about the reports? 
that I went over today or how to get access. Nick, I don't see any questions. Uh, I would add that uh, thank you for attending. Uh, Nick, you did a great job. Uh, and if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. We're here to help you. And uh, we want to see you succeed, and we're here to help. Yes. Thank you very much. Yes, I, I, I just want to say thank you all for everything that you do, helping your instructors, um, working with them. Um, assisting adult ed and if you do need assistance or need help getting any of the reports you know tim and i we're here to help so you can always reach out to us all right great job nick and tim thank you all so much for your time and thank you all for joining in today uh notes in terms of what nick covered that's found that elisa has posted that as a PDF document if you scroll up through the chat. So any notes and information that you want to be able to have to follow up to uh, remember some things that's available. And she also just put the evaluation link in the chat as well. So please take a quick minute. There's just a handful of questions there uh, that will help us get better at meeting your needs with these career tech talks. And again, thank you all so much for joining in. Nick and Tim, great job guys. And thank you all. We'll see you again next month at our February career tech talk.